back to the new tutorial of Uncock. So in this video, we are going to start with data workflows. So if you have seen like it is under uh, data and event processing. So we had covered a lot of the important stuff and other most important thing from this uh, data and event processing component is data workflow. So whatever we have covered, those are important too. Like we are taking the most important thing first and then we will cover the other one which are not that much necessary but I mean those are not frequently used but yeah those are also important so yeah this is something very important so let me just grab I mean drag and drop here in this uh, layout so yeah this is the data workflow component so here you will see a lot of I mean bunch of other components as well right so here you will see frequently used IO so this is such a component where inside a component there are a lot of different components altogether okay so if we try to cover this, it will take a lot of time to all these things one by one and these are very important. So yeah, we will cover all those things one by one. So yeah, before proceeding ahead, like what are those components? What is data workflow? Let me just give you an example or maybe just a sample JSON response. Why? I mean, with the help of this JSON response, I will try to explain you why data workflow is important and what is the need of it, right? So whenever you, you start using anything, okay, uh, not only with Uncork, but any technology or everything, right? So the first thing you should consider is why, right? Why it is needed, like what benefit it would add uh, from the current or no, from the present state. So that should be your mindset. So in that way, you will get the things better. So yeah, let's uh, begin this. So let's suppose uh, this is a JSON response, okay? This is an array of objects. So this is an array. Uh, and inside that we have three objects. This is object one, two and three. So this is something uh, we are getting a JSON response from maybe an API. Okay, so you want to manipulate or you want to work with this data, right? That is your end goal. Because when we get a JSON response from any API, it is something a standard way or the JSON is quite huge, right? we will not need everything from this. So let's suppose we just want to display the status and message, okay, from the JSON response from each and every object. We don't need this other things, error details, data, and this data. We just need status and message. Or let's suppose based on this status code, whether it is success, error, or success again, we need to add one more flag here in this object, which is decided based on the status. So basically we are going to manipulate this object, right? Or let's suppose you want to filter any object from this, right? Based on some error code, you want to filter all those objects from this array, which are having the status code as error. Okay, that is your requirement is. So all these things, so data manipulation, for that we use data workflow, right? So that is what the name also says, data workflow. So data flows into it and in between we work around with that so i think hope you are clear with this what is the need of data workflow so let's begin with uh, maybe we'll just close this so these are frequently used uh, which are also like shortlisted from this other one so let's take from the io section okay what is this uh, io section what is this input so let me just add a property name here maybe sample okay this is just a random name i am giving so if I take input, so what is this input? Okay, so in this, uh, the good thing is like if you just hover over this tool tape, you will get uh, the actual usage of this particular component. So what it says is, it lets you pull data from a single component into a data workflow. So whatever you want to do, like let's suppose you want to push data into this data workflow. So the thing is, it should be an input. Okay, if you want to take a data into this data workflow, the component that you are going to use is input component. So how we need to use that? Let's see that, okay? So let me just uh, save this first. And let me just take a hidden element. So what I'm trying to do here is, I'm just uh, creating a data. I'm just uh, creating this variable where I'm going to store all this data. Okay, so this is what I am going to do. So let's suppose in the default value, you will put all those things, okay? So our hidden element is there or a variable is there where everything is stored. 
you want to take this data into this data workflow sample okay so as i said you will use input component and in this input component so when you once you click on this one more small window will open and here you need to decide from which component you want to take that as an input so as we have just now created we have all those things so let's see this data right data variable is there this is something we just created on the screen and that is what it is visible here in this component top down so let's take data and here it is required as yes so what is this required yes and no is like uh, if it is yes then this data workflow will only trigger so data workflow is not going to automatically trigger we need to explicitly trigger uh, just like the other components but this data workflow will only trigger if this data is present just like in the decision component we were uh, marking that required silent optional thing right so in the same case we have a drop down here which says yes and no so if it is yes then the data should be present okay if data is absent then in that case data workflow will not run okay so this is the first thing and in this source we have a default and binded table so we'll go through that in detail i don't want to jump into this concept as of now uh, because it will require some other information or other uh, knowledge to understand this piece so by default it should be a default one so keep it as it is okay the next thing is let's create a console so if you just type here console you will see a uh, one more element here or if you can just type or you can just see that uh, component inside this io section only okay console so what it gives is so yeah if you want to connect this we need to just click on this drag and connect to this okay so here i will just give a label as sample data okay that's it so what i'm doing in in the console so what is this console whatever we where and i mean to whatever the component we attach to this console okay let me rephrase so whatever the component to which we attach this console so when we preview you will get to see this console on that console area in the browser okay slim seems like a confusing uh, i'm just trying to say that entire sentence but let me just show you that you'll get an idea so i'm i've just put input pass the data into it and connect it to console okay that's it so we'll save this so we'll just uh, use a button component over here and let it be let it be button property as button label as submit in the event we will mention that uh, data workflow where which we want to trigger okay so yeah that's it so let me preview this let me log in okay so i will just open the developer tool here and in the console you will see that okay so i'm going to press that button which is submit and here you will you will see this console right so it is getting displayed here as console and this is a label that we have put which is sample data and you will see here the data right so this is what if you want to see our data here in the console right we can put the console here so just like in traditional con uh, traditional coding things right you put that console.log and or in java you put that uh, system dot print dot output right so that is why you put that thing so you can see all those things in console so in the similar way we put this things console thing here so that we can see all those steps so here we have just one component that's it but in reality the workflow might be very large right so if you want to know the data at what stage what the data is you can just add all those consoles and at each and every step and when you will run you will get to see what is that actual data at each and every uh, part of the data workflow so yeah here this is the input and output okay so now we have here data as well as sample data and as you see we were able to see the sample data in the console so now what we will do we'll just add a output here okay and put it here so basically input and output so we are taking input from the data and then maybe in the output we'll uh, give one more different component so maybe here i will again drag and drop the variable the hidden component and here i will give the name as 
output data and let's suppose you want to store this data from the input to this output so here you will put the component as output data and that's it right so let me save this let me refresh this so now let me just let you show let you uh, let you guys show you one thing let me show you one thing so yeah now let me show you one thing so here we have a data and we don't have a output data right whatever the variable we have created because it is blank so it is not displayed here so if i click on submit button so yeah this things triggered and if you see we have got one more variable which is output data and all this data which we have uh, stored in the data that also have came in this output data thing right so that is what this is just a basic to start to get start with uh, data workflows we have taken the input and store it in the output data that's it so yeah that's it from this video uh, if you have liked this video please click on the like button if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe to the channel and yeah from the next video we will go through the other components in detail one by one thank you